Nate. Okay, by the way, can you hear us now? How is that? So Nate, Nate ME Generation asks, what's harder as a person who started to dunk, self alley or dunking while holding the ball? Um, I learned off the dribble, but I know a lot of people uh, like the self alley um, because you can jump higher, you can get more arm swing in it. But the only difficulty about the self alley, of course, is you have to catch the ball timing. and dunk it. So there's timing. Yeah. Um, it's more like coordination based. So there's pros and cons. The question for those of you on Facebook who just got here, Hoops Movement, what's up? On YouTube, we're streaming live on YouTube and Facebook groups. Very cool. Question from Nate is, you know, okay, I'm learning to dunk. Should I dunk with self alley oop or should I dunk with jumping with the ball? So basically. If you're jumping with alley oop, like Chandler said, you'll be able to jump higher because yeah. you don't have to jump with the ball. However, you're very reliant on the timing of the oop. Yeah. It needs to, on it, the passer or yourself if you're the passer. Yeah. If you're yeah. barely dunking, it needs to be fucking perfect, right? Exactly. Alternatively, what's easier? What's up, OC Basketball TV and Daily Basketball? What's going on? Alternatively, I could have Chandler hold the ball like this out for me. And you don't have to oop it, you run, and I grab it out of his hand so I can jump high without the timing. So that would be easier. And you already know where the ball is going to be um, with you know self alleys. If you're throwing a bounce or off the backboard or you're having a teammate throw it, you really don't know where the ball is going to be when you are in that space. So if you can jump with the ball, it's a little bit harder to learn. But with proper training, it's possible. But the cool thing about jumping with the ball is it's totally under your control your destiny your power right you know where the ball is at all times yeah so if you can in control of it exactly if you can dunk with the ball you can dunk whenever you want almost exactly you can just run up and stuff it so it's uh, more functional for games too to be able to dribble yeah more self, functional for games self alleys definitely don't happen in games very often <laughs> <laughs> yeah very rarely what's up hoops movement groups on facebook ask us any questions about training, jumping higher, dunking, basketball training. We've got Nade, o D OC Basketball TV, Daily Basketball. We're about to go. What are we about to do, Chandler? Beach workout. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Seattle. It's about 75 degrees. We're going to go hit up Alki, get some soft ground training. Um, what do you like about soft ground? Soft ground is, you know, obviously way better for your knees, your ankles, your back. Uh, a lot less is it impact. obvious? I mean, it's lower impact. So for those of you who have been following our channel, uh, you know, that soft ground, lower impact, lower impact, uh, less wear and tear on your joints. And that's what we're all about here at Hoops Movement. Yeah, sustainable sustain sustainability. Training. Yeah, also sustainable life living. You know, we like basketball. And we'd like to do it a long time. But we also want to be able to live when we're not playing yeah, basketball. Yeah, I want needs to play with my kids. By the way, on the soft ground thing, y'all should know that there's actually a good amount of studies on not humans but elephants, right? Elephants live in the zoo, and they either have sand encampments or concrete encampments. And they found that for elephants in the concrete, they get arthritis way faster. And even reducing that by an hour, two hours a day, drastically reduces arthritis. So if you're on concrete all the time, it kind of sucks. So what can you do to get to the track? Train, Turf, grass, mats, anything sand, anything yeah, anything sand. Mat rooms are great uh, if you have access to that. Yeah, so their science is on that. Okay, so we've got Darshil Prebrew. Darshil, where are you from? That's an interesting name. What's up, mates? Did you catch Zach Levine's interview with sports? I, I didn't catch his interview. Whether or not double East Bay is possible or not on regulation, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, Jay Clark's pretty close, right? Jay Clark, the jumper, has gotten to the rim off one foot and two foot. I would say it's definitely possible. It might take ten years to get done, but there's going to be like a seven foot five <laughs> high jumper who does it off one foot. Have you seen uh, that dude, Thon Maker? Yeah, Thon Maker. Maybe he could do something like that. He's like the next Durant, right? Yeah. Seven foot seven guard. Foot guard. <laughs> yeah, seven foot guard. I'm from New Zealand. Oh, cool. Shout out to Oceania. New Zealand's super cool place. 
I tried to study abroad there. I applied to, but I didn't get accepted. Really? I hear that we might have like a work or a work study type exchange with New Zealand, uh, kind of like how Australian Canada does. I'd still like to go there. Did you yeah, know that? Yeah. It looks New, really beautiful. New Zealand has the most farm land per, per person of any country in the world. That's incredible. By like twice as much, right? So do you have really good food there? I'm curious. I would believe it. Thon is a bully. <laughs> He's a beast. Don is. is a beast and a, pays to be a bully in basketball. I saw it on his mixtape. He went up to block a shot with his right hand and he missed and he swung again with his left hand and he yeah, swatted it off the backboard. And then he like swings again <laughs> with his right and then swats it off the backboard again. Yeah, you've yeah. seen those where it's like thump thump, like double block off the backboard. It's crazy. Yeah, by the way, shout out to the Hoops Movement group. If you got any questions, we'll answer them. Jump higher best training best workouts cures for knee pain what's going on with us what's up with you we're about to go train at the beach i might have a dunk session tonight possibly i'll snapchat it follow me on snapchat travis d Wu. follow channel on snapchat chandler dot hire h-i-r-e h-i-r-e yeah i'm gonna hire you yeah chandler dot <laughs> are we gonna hire you Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, one day. We really need video assistance. Yeah. That's one thing I've been thinking. Yeah, so who's got questions? Post them. OC Basketball. What's that guy named to your left? Who's on the left? This is Chandler. This is Travis. Chandler.hire on Snapchat. Travis D. Wu on Snapchat. Thonmaker is defying the rules of the NBA. Yo, we got Rakesh S. Kumar on Facebook. What's up, bro? We'll get to you in a second. Never played college or overseas. Well, you just know he's good. He's seven foot and can move. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Jennings did the same thing, right? Uh, no, Brandon Jennings played overseas uh, within... Oh, in, before in, he went. In Spain okay. or in Italy for a year. I think it was in... Yeah, some, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. he was in Spain. Yeah, I mean, if you're seven foot and you can move and you have guards... Is he, is he, he's 19 too, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's important he gets in the league because... Yeah, Jennings played overseas for a season. Um, you know, we looked at Thonmaker's movement. He definitely has some valgus knee, knee-together stuff. And just at his size, jumping like that, he could definitely have knee problems. Yeah. So just get him in the NBA as fast as possible. Like, he's not yeah. he's not going to have a 20-year career, right? Yeah. Let's not. He shouldn't waste any time not being in the NBA. Right. I mean, he kind of has a similar, like, frame to uh, Kevin Garnett at that age. So yes. Garnett's lasted a long time. I was thinking Anthony Davis as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he could last. We'll see. Kevin Garnett's kind of exceptional. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he is. They're actually <laughs> very exceptional. Um, Brandon played overseas. We got a question from Nate, but let's go to Rakesh here on Facebook. Rakesh says, what are some exercises I can do to improve my manual arts that you might have done referring to? Okay, so who's into the feet? <laughs> We've got a question right now. Basically, we're both out here rocking the toe socks. Yeah, so let's talk about the feet a little bit. I'm sorry for you people who think that it's like taboo or whatever, but you're missing out if you're not into the feet. So there's this concept of this thing, hyperarch. A lot of you guys have heard of it. I'm not going to go too in-depth on what that means or what it doesn't mean, but the idea is how do we use the feet in athleticism? Um, so what can you do to improve your manual arch? I'll show you something that I do and Chandler can share what he does for his feet but basically the idea is if you're flat footed like this that passes up and your knees come together you go valgus knee you can have knee problems you're not flat footed you're choosing flat footed issues too. right so if I if I dig my toes into the ground as if I was digging my fingers into the ground doing a push up and I push my arches out check it out that's why I call a manual arch some people call it hyperarch. I call it a manual arch because what does manual mean is you're doing it, you're making it. It's a muscular arch, right? I'm not, I can choose to be flat-footed, I can choose to have an arch, it's a choice. So now that I have an arch, you see that, in, by the way, an arch is an extremely strong structure, right? It the is. ancient Romans built their viaducts and the Greeks built their viaducts on arches. It's not just an arch here, but the arch goes all the way up here, right? My whole body becomes an arch. And the, the, the knee is a lot better at resisting inside-out force 
Then outside in, right? How common are ACL tears? Pretty common. How common are LCL tears? Uh, really not very common. Very at rare. All. Yeah. So basically, if you have a manual arch, it's going to protect you from strains because you can say say that your ankle is now locked. It's also going to protect protect you from knee injuries because now your knees are are going out, right? And you might have LCL problems. Because Another thing that the arch does too mm -hmm. is what are you what are you doing right now with your feet? You're aware of your feet right now, I'm right? I'm flexing them, yeah. Yeah, so you know where your toes, your feet are in space, right? Because you're physically doing something with them. So if your feet are, you know, if you have you know, flat feet and you're not using them, you might not know where your feet are in space. You might be more yeah. likely to step on something. I mean, I mean, I know that when I'm, you know, creating an arch or, you know, doing something with my feet, that I'm aware of my feet, I also know where my feet are. I'm less likely to, you know, yeah. roll an ankle. By the way, this is a really different philosophy than stay on the balls of your feet, stay on the balls of your feet like this. I used to do that, and that is a lot of pressure on the big toe joint. And it's the Achilles. Here. And on the Achilles. This is how the Achilles tears. Instead, if you stand your whole foot, you have more balance, you have more contact, you can apply more force through the whole foot. And if you look at it, there's a myth that the um, athletes stand their balls. That's not true. Sprinters stand the balls of their foot. However, unilateral motion. Yeah. However, what we're doing in basketball is a lot more complex. So, for instance, a jump step. You look at elite jumpers, Nate Robinson, anyways. Anyone? They jump off their whole foot. Their last foot is off the whole foot. The left foot comes in, and maybe you don't get the whole foot down. But the there's there's a mythology that you're not supposed to use your heel. Heel is, is how, actually, we use the heel when we jump our highest. We use the heel when we squat, right? We use the heel with our whole... Our heels activate our glutes, which is the biggest muscle in our body. Yes, yeah, the posterior chain. If you trace the heel all the way up to the glutes, right? It's it's important. Yeah, right? when, you're toe, when you're on your toes, you're more quad dominant, and your glutes are bigger than your quads. So yeah. They can generate more force. So, yeah, I mean, most of the time we're not striking with our heel, but we're going to use our heel, right? Ideally, we strike with the whole foot at once a lot of the time. It depends. Different movements are going to be different. If we're slowing down, heel break is one way to do it, which is why I like the back pedal, because you can slow down with the whole foot better. So, R Rakesh, what do you think about that? Is that? Does that make sense? Is that a crazy concept? What do you guys think about that? about using the feet. Another question from Nade. Channel, you want to read this? Yeah, all right. So how high would one need to reach in order to one, get the first dunk, two, dunk consistently, fingers over, hand over, etc. So in terms of how high above the rim that we need to be getting? Um, I mean, it really depends on how well you can grip the ball, um, which doesn't always necessarily correlate to how big your hands are. There's a lot of exercises you can do to actually improve your grip strength. Uh, Travis and I do a lot of medicine ball tosses. It's really great. Um, anything where you're, you know, like planks or something like that, where you're actually pushing your hand into the ground is going to develop some hand strength. Uh, handstands, uh, lots of things like that are really good for um, mm -hmm. making your hands and fingers stronger. But, I mean, you're definitely going to be needing to get over the rim. Um, so, when you're dunking consistently, where do you feel like you're hitting? You can dunk if you're like right here, probably. You can kind of like baby dunk if you're like here. In order to be consistent, you'd like to be up here yeah. or, or more. And that is more than a foot over the rim, right? So you start with what's your standing reach? Not necessarily your standing reach, but your diagonal reach. My standing reach is about seven foot eight. My diagonal reach is about eight feet. So I actually only need, if I'm di reaching diagonally, about 24 inches to touch the rim. And then I need to get maybe a foot over the rim. So to dunk consistently for me, I need to be around 36, probably, we would say. But for you, it might be more if you don't have 8-foot diagonal reach. Yeah. Right? You might need a 40 <laughs> or more. You know, some people uh, just, just aren't gifted with length, you know? Yeah, there's some, some dudes out there, real small, that are getting up. Um, with not that much reach. Yeah. I think what that Nico dunks, his he said his standing reach was seven five and a half. Yeah, this guy jumps crazy yeah, high, so it's but. possible. Yo, we got Jacob Van Lunen, who by the way, Jacob Van Lunen is a 
Ma Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Champion, which is pretty entertaining. Um, we'll get to you in just a second, but I want to say Nade. Yeah, measure your standing reach, subtract it from 10 feet, at about 12 inches. If it's not enough, bring the rim down. There's no shame in a low rim dunking. Jordan Kilgannon does that. It's fun. It's great practice. Right? And also, there's no shame in grabbing on the net, which can give you two extra inches. And if it's if it's it comes down to two inches, that can be all you need to yeah. dunk, right? So, man, we got a lot of questions. This is really cool. We need to roll in about what ten minutes, get to the beach, so to train. So we're gonna say, um, Rakesh has another question about on Facebook about. If, by the way, if you're not in the Hoops Movement Online Facebook group, you should jump in there. I thought you should align your big toe as a main contact point and only stay on balls. I don't care what anyone says. Watch how LeBron James moves in slow motion. Watch how Russell Westbrook moves in slow motion. These guys touch their heel down. They use different types of foot combinations. I'm not going to say, hey, LeBron, you shouldn't do that. It's like, you're, that's just what you're doing, right? Yeah. So you can take what we say or what some other person says on the Internet, but ultimately you should actually look up what the professionals are doing, right? Don't take our word for it. Yeah. Don't take anyone's word for it because you can go on YouTube. If you're a computer, you can watch in 0.25 speed. You can find phantom high definition and you can see a lot of things. So yeah. watch, just because yeah, watching how people move is like that you want to move like is really great. You know? Study their movement patterns. And yeah. And we're going to be wrong about some things too. Like we're going to be 20% uh, wrong on... Uh, certain things so even us you know you should have some skepticism and some doubt so why don't we move to the hoops movement group we've got a question here from Jacob Van Lunen you want to read this one all right so Jacob says I've been doing a lot of hiking with my daughter strapped to my chest I was wondering it's getting easy and I've thought about adding a weighted vest should I be concerned with knee ankle issues or will the fact that I'm walking keep it safe so with the uphill, um, I don't think you would have to be too concerned about uh, knee and ankle issues, but it's more about when you're coming down because you're already putting extra impact, extra force on uh, your feet, knees, and ankles when you're walking down the hill. So if you're doing flat hiking um, or if you just had to carry the weighted vest up the hill, I would say that's totally fine but coming back down it can be difficult um yeah you know i've done some hiking and it definitely so first of all i mean it depends what you're training for like if you have your daughter strapped to your chest you already have a weight vest um if it's getting e easier you could add you could add more i don't know it's not necessarily a bad idea yeah but you are hiking you know it's cardio uh, it's not necessarily going to help with your dunk. You're going to get leaner, right, which is going to help, but it's not going to help with your explosion. So I would recommend using a walking stick if you're not already for the descending. Definitely. It helps. Yeah, you could even use two, like the poles. And I would also recommend experimenting with some backward descending. It's That's not uncommon from advanced hikers because, yeah, again, the climbing is not so much the issue, but when you're going down, there's the impact and the way that we descend forwards, we kind of have to go heel break, heel break, heel break. There's also uh, walking sideways down. Sideways. Um, Some people like walking backwards up as well. It gets a different kind of thing going. I don't really do that. But definitely I, an interesting feeling. I see people do that, and it, it makes sense. Backward descending on steep parts. Okay, that makes sense. Um, with uh, uh, Yeah, it makes sense. I don't see why not, like... If you have knee pain, probably take the weight vest off. By then it might be too late, but, I mean, what's the worst? I mean, if it's just one hike from... if You you would know probably right away if it's too much. So, yeah. I mean, it sounds like definitely a good idea. I mean... It's probably good for you. Hiking's great. Yeah. Low-intensity cardio, which yeah. is good, because that's going to be burning fat mostly, which is what we want to do if we're trying to get lean, so... And also, if you're going to be doing backpacking you got to carry, like, 40-pound packs yeah. at times, right? So It's good training for that. Yeah, those people don't have necessarily... It's fine, right? Yeah. I don't know. This is not the most si si being, scientific uh, careful coming down the hill. Yeah, I don't know. We don't exactly know what your goals are either. Your reach is 7 foot 0. So in that, in that case, it would mean that... 
Man, we've got so many good questions. We, how many more can we take? Five, ten, or a few more? Uh, how is Isaiah Thomas landing? He does a lot of backslides, right? Yeah. I actually don't watch him that much. I'm not certain. but he We used to play with him. <laughs> yeah, he came up with Jamal Crawford, and Jamal does a lot of backslides. And is, oh, congrats to Jamal for yeah. getting sixth man of the year. For the third time, and he's 36 years old, he's set all kinds of records. Yeah. He's not retiring anytime soon. Right. Jamal has incredible longevity. He is. He's Watch actually him looking land. like more fit than ever, too. Yeah. Study him if you want to last a long time. Um, okay, if you're seven foot zero, it means you would need like a 48 inch to like throw it down hard consistently. Yeah, I mean, you could potentially be getting, you know, just your hand above the rim. Yeah, but I mean, it's 36 just to grade. So, it. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, your hand is still going to be, you're going to yeah. be needing to get 40, 40 to 48. You might be able to dunk at 44, like maybe, yeah. right? So, I would say bring the rim down. Um,. Valgus knee is bad. I've noticed several NBA players having valgus knee. I recognize it happened. So, valgus knee is... So, so just because an NBA player... So, let's talk about heuristics. I'm going to jump in here. For those of you who want some really high-level thinking. Heuristical decision-making is where you defer to up the authority, right? So, if everyone does something, we would probably assume it, it might be an advantage. But if a pro does something, okay, fuck what the crowd's doing. Let's copy the pro. But what the science says is even above the pro, right? Because we haven't hit our final evolution in anything that we're doing. And the science tells us where we might be next. So generally, we want to be looking at what, what pros are doing. You know, if LeBron's using his heel, it doesn't mean it's perfect, right? It depends on the science. The science on valgus knees is not good. It's not good. Not good at all. However, it's possible to put your knees inward without valgus knee. So valgus knee is basically where your feet are out, but your knees are coming in. So your knees are coming out of line inwards. Yeah. This is, ACL chairs are extremely common from this. By the way, it's like five times more, ten times more common for girls, female athletes, because they, they have, have wider, wider hips. hips. Yeah. So it's slightly less bad. You know, you can get away with valgus knee and never tear anything if you have narrow hips. MJ has narrow hips, right? If, yeah. Like, it's not that big a deal. It's a, This is way bigger of a deal, right? That's when it tears. So so if you have narrow hips, it's not that big a deal. Also, check this out. This is not valgus. You can point your toes inward and put your knees together. Or how does this work? So you're rotating Internal, out your hips. Yeah. If you rotate, you can rotate your hips in. How the fuck does this work? It's, I mean, it's risky as well. Yeah, like this. So basically, the valgus knee is when your knees bend in. But even though right now my knees are pointing together, it's my hips that are pointing in, right? Yeah. So this is kind of like chair pose in yoga. This is something we do this. So like normal, normal hip rotations like this. Normal hip uh -huh. rotation and uh -huh. then inward hip rotation. And then in yoga, we put our feet together. Mm -hmm. We have in or internal hip rotation, and mm -hmm. we sit down in a chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really complicated. Um, but, I mean, that can help with balance if you're really narrow-hipped or your feet are close together. Um, but if your feet aren't close together, you probably don't want to have your knees coming in on your jump shot. Okay, we've got... That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but again, if you've got narrow hips, it's less of a problem. Yeah. So we got time for like two more questions. Um, I'm currently a mid to long distance runner. I usually run for long periods of time. Does this hurt my jumping ability? Um, I mean, it definitely can. You you want to be you know developing your your fast twitch muscles. You want to be you know more explosive in your training. Cardio or long distance can hurt. I mean, it depends on the distance you're running too. 800 to 1600 is pretty long. I would say if you're running 400 or less, then it's probably beneficial. But once you're getting over that, um, it could, it could help hurt your jumping ability. So I'm going to jump in here. Running is it's probably good for you and fun thing to do. As far as long distance running and jumping seems to not be helpful. Right, the highest jumpers are the sprinters, yeah. by far. Yeah, guys right? like Usain Bolt. Yeah, or that, or the explosive lifters. 
generally marathon runners. There's marathon run runners who have literal two inch verticals, right? Why is that? Because there is. It's just how the muscles work. I don't know the easiest way to describe this, but there's definitely a dichotomy between fast twitch and slow fast twitch, twitch and slow fibers. twitch. Yeah. So priorities, man. If you want to be a high jumper, a dunker, and you do track, see if you can switch to the 200 or the 100 or the or even the 400 or hurdles. Running the, or the hurdles. Hurdles would be the best. Or the high jump. Talk to your coach and say, hey, I'm interested in doing some more sprinty. Explosive stuff. So, let's say we have one time for one more question. So, Rakesh, sorry, can't um, get to this next thing, but you can DM. I won't necessarily respond to everything. DM Chandler. Dot hire. DM Travis D Wu, and we'll help you on training. Thoughts that's on the Snapchat, right? Yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, and then uh, my Instagram is chandles22, all one word. And channel or higher on Facebook. I know yeah. not all the kids are on Facebook these days. I'm wondering, okay, thoughts on playing outdoors with summer coming up? Anything in specific to lower your risk of injury, stretching, warming up? Thoughts? I don't play outdoors anymore. Um, just kind of hurts my knees. What do you think, Trev? I feel similarly. One way to reduce risk of injury of playing outdoors is just simply to not jump. Work on your boxing out. Work on yeah. things that keep you grounded. Yeah, I would say jump less on concrete or work on your back rolls and wear padded, uh, sh you know, wear a sweatshirt or whatever. Hey, Joe. But, yeah, I mean, it's a fun thing to do. I like to play, or well, I guess I kind of play outdoors every day, but what I do, you know, is just dribbling. So I'm on the ground uh, working on my ball handling. I'll go out in the backyard. It's a great way to, you know, get your vitamin D, but not jump, um, not putting any impact force on any of my joints. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it depends where you're located. Chris John in the house. John, what's up? What's up? CJ Champ. Go follow CJ Champion on Instagram if you want to see a 40, a head at rim jumper. Yeah, he gets up. Um, the that's the kind of vertical that Darshiel needs Yeah, to live to dunk, dunk. On, on Snapchat. How many, we got some more questions. We need to roll. We're going to the beach for a workout right now. So we're going to try to do this more regularly, hopefully once a week. Save the questions and uh, if you Actually, want to... DM, DM Chandler on Snapchat. Definitely, definitely yeah. uh, get some questions answered on there. By the way, if you want more in-depth training, we're definitely open to it. It's a value thing, though. If we're giving you a lot of time, it's also not free. This stuff is all free, but we're not giving you a bunch of in-depth time. I personally don't really have time for more clients. Chandler maybe does. If you're interested in getting remote training, send Chandler a DM, send him a message. And we can help you. You have Chandler dot hire on Snapchat, Chandler J hire on Facebook, uh, C handles twenty two or Chandler J hire on Instagram. Um, I'll be able to get to anything that you guys have, or if you're interested in some more in depth training, uh, let me know. Yeah, and everyone, thank you all so much. This was went super awesome. Um, have a great. By the way, those of you on Facebook, we're streaming on YouTube. Those of you on YouTube, we're streaming on Facebook. So make sure to join the YouTube, make sure to join the Facebook group, and we will see you, we will see you soon on the other side. Much thanks, love. Thanks for participating, thanks for watching, much love. Yeah, have an awesome Wednesday. Peace.